my initial thoughts are we were in trouble when it was 84 80 with uh, three of our guys on the bench next to me. And um, bang, Rodney hits one off of a great kind of loose ball type deal, and then Chase hits a big one. I mean, that, you know, Chase, is, Chase uh, has, has had his moments, obviously, throughout the course of his career, but how much guts does it take to miss the last one in regulation? Which, by the way, we had a timeout left, but as he threw one down the court, I didn't see us getting a better look than that. I mean, he had a wide, I thought he just rose up over holes and shot it, and it looked good. And, um, you know, I was kicking myself for not using it at that point, but um, such a gutty effort by our guys. Such a gutty, gutty effort. And I said on TV, both teams have great character. Don't use this as an excuse to get down on Indiana. I still think they're a team to beat through April. And, um, our guys just played really hard and really mattered. Um, and they figured out a way. Questions for coach or the players? Coach Stevens. What's Alex got to do to get on the scholarship now? <laughs> you know, um, you know, you can, and, and I've said this many times before, I was a Division three player. So once guys get here, it's free game to play. And from where Alex came, and Alex will be the first to tell you he was spending a little bit last year and looked like a guy that was going to struggle to find time on the floor. But as the year went on, he started finding ways to win. So our final ways to win, and he always had a competitive will that was extremely hot. And, um, you know, again, we're going to play our best player, and Alex is certainly one of them. Did you draw up that play for him? You no, know, it, was, it was baseline screens. We had run it all game. Um, we had a couple of different options. But one of the options is the guy on top can drive the basketball, and usually that's Roosevelt up there. Um, and usually Alex is one of the cutters and screeners on the baseline. But um, we had a lot of success in that action, we felt like. And we had to use our last time out with 19 <coughs> seconds left to get the ball in. Um, and so I thought that was you know, our best bet moving forward because I didn't feel like we could call a set because I didn't know if we could dribble it around till eight or nine seconds because of the pressure. So let's just get into movement and then see if we can't figure out a way to get a basket. Alex, what were you thinking at the top of the key? Um, I was looking for the, the options and they weren't open. Um, I saw the clock at about six. So I figured I'd try to make the play, and I like to get, I like to get to my right hand, so I did a little spin move, and it, uh, the float is a shot I work on a lot, and I just happened to get a lucky bounce. Um, bounce in, it was a good thing. Go into Hinkle sometime at 10 p.m., and you'll see our gun out, uh, shooting the shooting machine, and Alex is in there working floaters and jump shots, and a bunch of other guys are too, but this kid lives in the gym. Yeah. Alex, was there any hesitation on your part, or just figured you had to, had to go over that? Once it got down to six, there was uh, no hesitation. Um, I was going to shoot that unless Rodney or Kellen, somebody else got wide, wide open. Um, I just figured it up, up to the rim. Um, if I missed it, they weren't going to get a shot off in time. So I luckily it bounced in. And Zeller, out, we and Zeller was out, yeah. So there wasn't anybody really inside. Um, any shot blockers or real threats of that. So I just figured I'd try to get as deep as I could and float it up there once um, I saw the clock wind down. Jeff? Brian, what, what did you think of Andrew's play against Cody? Fantastic. Fantastic. I, I've said this all along. We're going to be overly skeptical of anybody with size. It's just the nature of all of us. But to be to, to achieve what that kid's achieved, not many guys in college basketball have done what Andrew Smith's done. And you know, um, nobody asked me about him in the first 12 minutes of interviews all week. You know, and I think that there's a guy that's played in two national championship games. He earned that today. Can you talk a little bit about what um, Oladipo was doing on Clark in, during the first half? He did a half? great job. Oladipo's just a hard guy to play against. I actually anticipated them putting Farrell on Clark because I didn't think that they would want to risk one of those other guys guarding Roosevelt. And I thought it was hard for them to guard Roosevelt, really hard. And uh, But Oladipo is a heck of a player. You know, he's got great stuff to him. I, I, we walked out of our locker room. Um, when these guys had all left in the end of the second half, I turned to Matthew Graves and said, I've never seen a guy that athletic. He had a couple balls on the floor, boom, just layups. And it was like, good news is it was so fast we couldn't foul him. And we couldn't <laughs> even get to him. Mike. Uh, before this season started, in your wildest dreams, could you have imagined this moment? No. Um, not at all. You know, you grow up. I was talking to my dad before the game. You know, you grow up um, in the backyard. And you're with your hoop, just dreaming of playing against the number one team, last second shot, shooting it, but not in my wildest dreams that I really think that would be a reality.
Second round. Right, can you talk for a second about just the, the feeling of, of being the number one team, which with all you've accomplished, this is the first, forget that it's Indiana, but just the idea of you took on the number one team and came away. Come on. Yeah, we got beat by the number one team twice in pretty memorable nights. Um, I don't think too much about rankings. We'll probably be ranked this week, but that doesn't make us any better than we were last week. Time. Coach, uh, Talk about the uniqueness. Is Roosevelt the most unique player? That you, there were possessions he guarded Jordan Hulls. Next possession he's guarding Zeller. Huh? And, and again, with all due respect to everybody else on the court, I thought he was the best player on the floor when he was on the floor. <coughs> um, on, you know, when, when that ball went up to the rim, he found ways to get it on both ends of the floor. Nine defensive rebounds in 29 minutes, 16 to 12, 7 to 2. What did he not do? Shoot threes, that was it. And so uh, he was, he's really unique, he's really good. And the thing about I like the best about him is he competes and he loves to compete. Hey David, Roosevelt uh, <coughs> will try to compare you against other players. Uh, you don't seem to resemble anyone else. Uh, who would you compare yourself to and what, what was it like watching the end of that game and you're on the bench? Um, I don't really think I compare myself to anybody. Lots of people like to compare me to Beasley, but I just think I'm my own unique player, and uh, it was hard watching it from the bench, but I knew our team would pull it out because we got great players on the court. Dave? Brad, uh, how, how special is this season shaping up to be? Obviously, uh, nowhere near done, but. 10% done. Rod, I told Roddy you didn't come here to win a game in December. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's good so far. Through eight through 10 games, it's, you know, you know, as a coach, I'd, I'd like to have Xavier on the way back. But. I'm not going to be great. Roosevelt, I don't think Butler needs signature wins in his program anymore, but for this team this year, <coughs> what kind of a confidence boost is this win today? Um, it's, it's a good confidence boost, but then again, we already know how good we are and how good we can be, so we just want to go into the next game, prepare for Evansville, and get ready to play hard again in another game. Colin? Uh, what was the message going into overtime? You got two two big guys fouled out. Uh, you kind of shifted the momentum a little bit there late. What, what Proud of your you effort. Keep it going. Guards try to rebound over the top. We didn't do a very good job rebounding on the defensive glass. But you know, part of that was we switched a ton of ball screens. Um, we, we switched guards on the Zeller. We switched guards on the Watford. It's hard to rebound, um, and that's probably why we got in some foul trouble as well. But um, you know, we, we didn't feel like we wanted to give that up on those guys. And, and you know, Rodney, Rodney guarded Holes the entire game. And I thought he did a terrific job on Holes today. We have time for a couple more. Rich? Brad, just how, how great is this event? It's the best. I mean, I, I've been in, I have lived what every coach dreams of living in the last few 13 years at Butler. This is as good of an event, especially a non-exempt event, as there is other than deep into the NCAA tournament. And that is, but I don't think you ever can face crowd. I don't think you're in front of crowds like this. That crowd was unbelievable. Um, and to see the, you know, the Purdue fans and the, and the Notre Dame fans and the IU fans and the Butler fans and a lot of people that probably root for a lot of those teams. And that's a good thing. Um, it's pretty neat. It's pretty neat. David? The, uh, the fact that you're using so many different combinations, getting so many contributions, are you becoming a much harder scout for other teams because you, you, you do so many different things now? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think, um, yeah, we do a lot, but everybody else does a lot too. I mean, I, 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 I didn't sleep a lot this week because Indiana mixes up defenses and, and changes the way they do things. And I saw they played like a line in three today, which is Two guys in a zone, three guys in a man. They played a lot of hard man. They increased the pressure. They pulled it back. I mean, everybody's hard to prepare for in college basketball. Um, so I don't know that we're any different than anybody else, really. Final question right here for other one of the players. I mean, you're in your city, but there's a lot of red in there. Just your thoughts on the crowd and, and what you guys did to react to that. <coughs> Can you repeat the question? Just a lot of red in the crowd in your own city. Do you feel like it was? A neutral crowd or a pro IU crowd, at least? I mean, we try not to focus on that. Um, you know, we try to focus on what's going on in the court. Obviously, um, I think Victor Aldico had a few dunks and the crowd got pretty loud, but I mean, we really try not to focus on the crowd. We were uh, thankful for the support we got from our fans today. Um, they did a great job. We had a lot of them here, so no, we didn't really focus on that at all.